Hi, this is Alex from phpacademy.org with a video for the new Boston. Okay, so in this tutorial, we're going to take a look at Ajax requests in jQuery. Now, we've already looked in previous part at get and post requests. However, what we're going to be doing now is performing an asynchronous HTTP request, which is an Ajax request. So we're going to go ahead and set up our page uh, to look similar to what we did in the last parts of the tutorial, which were the get and the post. And we're going to create an input text area or an input field. Then we're going to create a button which is going to submit uh, some data to a file. Now, the first thing we're going to do is just test Ajax on its own. And then in the next part of the tutorial, we're going to look at submitting data uh, to the file itself. So let's go ahead and create a button. So input type uh, is button and we'll give this a value of load. OK, so we're going to give this an ID. Uh, that's just going to be button. So we can use an event handler in Ajax.js, which we've included on our page to actually load a uh, particular file. So we're going to go ahead and create a div inside here. And this is going to have the ID of, let's say, content. OK, so essentially what we're going to be doing is we're going to be clicking this button and we're going to be loading some data into this content div from a file. Now, we've already looked at using the uh, load function in a previous part of the tutorial set. However, this is an, a lot more effective way uh, because we can use things. We can use handlers like success um, and we can use a callback function on this to see if the um, data was performed correctly or the uh, load was performed correctly. So uh, let's go ahead uh, to ajax.js and start to write out our event handler. Now we've called our button button, so we know that we can reference that in here um, using a selector. So we can say button. And uh, we're going to say dot click. And then we're going to create a function inside of here with a block, as we've done before. I'm going to bring this down. And inside of here, we're going to create the ajax request. So it's dollar sign dot ajax. And then in brackets, we're going to go ahead and send multiple parameters to this. So let's go ahead and create some curly brackets inside here. And we'll just bring that down so it's easier for us to manage. Now, the first parameter we give is URL. And this is obviously the uh, page that we want to load. So let's go ahead and load a page that, first of all, doesn't exist. So we can test out the next parameter, uh, which is success. So the page that we want to load is page.html. Now we're going to uh, comma separate these values. So I'm going to put a comma on the end of this line and come down. I'm now going to create a uh, parameter called success. And uh, we're going to create this equal to a function. And again, we're holding the data that's returned from this page.html. So now we have um, the, well, we're going to come down again with these uh, brackets here. And we now have this data variable here, which contains the uh, values inside of this page.html, or the contents of this page.html. So what we can do now is we can go ahead and uh, apply this to content. So let's go ahead and uh, reference content with the selector content. And then I'm going to say .html data. So let's just run over what we've done before we go ahead and look at this in our browser. Um, on the click of a button, we're calling an, uh, H, uh, an Ajax request to this URL here, page.html, which doesn't currently exist in our root directory. Let's just take a look. OK. Um, what we're then doing is, uh, upon success, we are creating a function with data. And then this data is then going inside of our content area, which is our div. Let's go ahead and refresh the page. When I click load, you'll see nothing happens. This is because uh, the request was not successful and therefore we didn't load any data. So let's now go ahead and create this page.html file. Uh, let's save that um, inside our root directory as page.html. And we'll go ahead and put some strong tags in and loaded OK. OK, back to our uh, browser. Let's refresh the page. Let's click load and you'll see that we've uh, successfully loaded in the contents of this HTML file. So obviously this is extremely basic and we're not passing any variables just yet. We're going to look at that in the next part of the tutorial. 
We're also going to look at um, testing whether we have an error. And then we're also going to be uh, looking at what we do if there is an error and how we can display this to the user. So similar to post, but this Ajax um, HTTP request, uh, this asynchronous HTTP request, uh, is uh, probably a lot better to use. You have um, a vast majority of parameters that you can use uh, with regards to this um, functionality. Um, as opposed to the get and post HTTP requests. So this is an, a lot better way to do it. If you go over to the jQuery documentation, you can read up about this, uh, this functionality and performing this request and how many parameters you can actually supply to it um, and how many different things you can do with it. So in the next part of the tutorial, we're going to look at sending some data to a PHP file and then returning the result.